the manual muscle test for abductor pollicis longus. We're going to be positioning the wrist kind of like so to begin with. So I'm going to show my partner the action first. We're going to be abducting that thumb and then we're going to be adding in a little bit of that radial deviation component of it. So again, thumb all the way up and away and then the wrist motion. Can you do that for me yourself? Excellent. So we're going to bring her wrist into more of a neutral plane. I'm going to be holding the thumb up. Now because of its insertion on this metacarpal here, the base of it, I'm going to be providing my resistance to the distal part of that metacarpal and not onto the phalanges. So I'm going to ask you not to let me move you as I push in this area. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. And relax. And for this part, you're going to abduct your thumb all the way, and then again, that wrist up against my resistance whenever you're ready. Good. Just like so. The last thing that we're going to do with abductor pollicis longus is going to be a length position. So because you can only adduct the thumb so far as it gets towards that index finger and the metacarpals come together, so we're actually going to take it a little bit into extension. And so when I adduct it, I try to bring it behind the index finger. Now, as we said, it did radial deviation of the wrist. So I'm going to turn her wrist and sink her down a little bit into ulnar deviation. So I have the thumb in a extended adducted position while we ulnarly deviate the wrist for the length position. And that will conclude everything for abductor pollicis longus.